There's a All whole right. lot of Olsen magic on this podcast right now. So what we've done, the current 12 for Texas A&M baseball is Ryan Targach. Austin Boast and Troy Clanch. Troy's the original. Austin last year wore 12, and that's going to be the theme of this podcast right now. First of all, to all three of you, howdy, and thanks so much for doing this. Howdy. Yeah, howdy, everyone. Howdy. Troy, I start with you. You were the first 12 under Coach Schloss. Your thoughts, and did you realize the impact that it would have, not just on Texas and in baseball, but on yourself? Yeah, I mean, going into it, everyone had talked about it throughout the fall, and I don't think that I truly had a grasp on what it meant. Um, I mean, these guys, obviously, like growing up and watching AM, like they had a much better understanding of of what it meant. And uh, I think I knew that it was a big deal, but I didn't realize the magnitude of how big of a deal it was. And as the days counted on, and um, I obviously like understood how much it meant, but like even today, to this day, I still get people messaging me or I still see things on social media or, you know, when, when Bose got the honor and then people are reaching out to me and now with targeting the honor, like it is something that I think has a chance to stick with me for the rest of my life. And um, it's, yeah, it's amazing. Austin, you follow Troy, but I absolutely love that as soon as Tar was named, I think the first thing I saw on social media was you congratulating him. Oh, yeah. Troy did a great job and handed it off to you. And I know you were voted by your teammates, but uh, it had to be special to be able to follow someone who did it so well. Oh, heck yeah. Troy coming in. And like you said, like, he didn't grow up an AM fan, and I didn't know Troy coming in. He was there for a year, but the impact that he made just that first fall, just as a leader and as just a person around the clubhouse, it just – he uh, established what it meant to be this number and how you are supposed to represent this team. And it just made it easier on me because I knew going in what I had to do and what it meant to everything. And it's awesome giving it to Tar, and it was such a – it was such an honor to wear and now pass down to him. I, Tar, it seems natural, and I don't want to downplay it. it. It is such an honor, but you seem to be just perfect for this, as evidenced by the vote by your teammates. How special is that? I mean, it's a huge honor. And just to even, I mean, I've had two great mentors who are on this call as well. And, you know, first with Troy getting it, you know, I've, we've had uh, several long conversations, you know, in the fall and then in the spring, I know. Um, just with the one short year together, I mean, he's made an impact in my life. And with Boast, uh, me and him have had several years playing together, and uh, we've grown closer over the years uh, just playing here. But what I've learned from both of these guys, I mean, they're going to stick with me for the rest of my life and definitely in my last year playing here. Um, but it's, it's an honor and a blessing. Was it something special when Schloss announced he was going to do this? I, I thought it was because it was something different. I mean, he came in to change the culture of Texas A&M baseball and putting, he knew what 12 meant to this university and putting that into our baseball team just, I don't know, it just means more, honestly. Yeah, I would agree. And I think, I think just him wanting to put himself into the middle of the culture and the values that A&M has, like, he wanted the baseball team to represent that. And I think there's no better way to do it than to have a number 12 on the field. And get to have our, uh, uh, our, our university's core values. Um, and that's how he kind of, you know, that's what 12 means, you know, get to live that out, not just in myself and not just these guys, but in every single person on that field. And so that's uh, just like what Bose was saying. I'm glad that uh, whenever he came in, he kind of brought that into this program. It's not just representing A&M. There's a leadership responsibility to it as well on the team, as well as representing A&M, is it not? For sure. For sure. I would say, I mean, it's a huge leadership. I mean, coming in, you know, I mean, I'm not going to say it's for sure an older guy, but most likely an older guy who's been there, been around the block, knows how to, knows how to win, been on a winning team and knows how to lead younger guys and be that model, not only, by their actions but just like how they talk to people like how they go about their business i mean it's huge for leadership on the team and i know i speak for myself in this regard I don't, i'm sure you guys have something similar and tar you'll experience this but 
I think wearing the number 12 brings something out within you. You know, like you have these internal leadership abilities and um, you lead the team throughout the fall. But as soon as you wear the number, you now know for sure, okay, all of my teammates' eyes are on me. So I have to, you know, not step it up a notch, but like, I really got to, I got to be this guy. And um, it's something that we all want to do. And we all just kind of did naturally. But as soon as you have that number bestowed on you, it's like, okay, now it's time that there are no excuses. This is the man that I have to be. And this is who my teammates need me to be. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. You know, I've definitely felt that just in the, in the, in the fall being the older guy. And then even now uh, in this, uh, in this preseason being number 12, that, you know, there's eyes on me, uh, younger guys, older guys, everybody. And um, kind of how I see it, uh, me being a freshman here, uh, I kind of look to the guy who, uh, you know, he stood out from everybody else. He did what he was supposed to be told. He did more than that. He set the example. He held that certain standard and he went about his business. And that's the guy that I want to be for these younger guys. Uh, Because I know how I felt coming in uh, you know, kind of timid, shy, stuff like that. And I want to make sure that, you know, it's an easy, it's an easy transition for these guys. And even for these, for these, uh, for these transfers, you know, it's still their first year coming in, you know, they're new to this and stuff like that. And so I've been around the block for a little bit. And so uh, again, to bring these older guys along with me, it's even, uh, it's been fun too. I love to talk about this with the student athletes for all the teams that I'm with that I don't think for the three of you, your legacies will be ending the moment you leave the campus. I think your legacies become almost like a ripple. And I don't know if you guys have thought of that, but Troy, there is an effect to the younger players who played with you. Austin, same thing. Tar, that's going to be there. That legacy is going to be when that player then leaves. And then again, that legacy may continue because you're hoping You've had that positive impact on that player, and that's then on a another player. There's a legacy aspect to this, is it not? I mean, definitely. I think one thing that uh, I was always told and what I tried to take personally is just leaving the jersey or leaving the program better than the way you found it. So my goal was, you know, when I put this jersey on, I want to leave it better than the way I found it. And then my goal was for Boast to put on the jersey and for both to leave the jersey better than the way that I found it. And now Tar will do the same thing. And I think when you have that mentality, it's just, it continues to build and it continues to raise the standard every single year. So my goal is to be the bottom of the standard at this point, because I want everyone else just to keep climbing and climbing. For sure. I mean, you literally can't say it better than what he just said, for sure. Because, I mean, you want those, like Tar said earlier, you want those guys to look at you and you're the guy, you're the one everybody's looking at. And so to go out there and perform for them and build everything around it and show those guys how to be so they can be like, man, like I want to be like, it's my goal to be the 12th man. It's my goal to be that guy that everybody looks to that. Like, it's like, man, he is the leader. And so just to, to have that, I think it's huge. Yeah. And to go off what Troy was saying uh, a little bit on that was that, Kind of the reason why I play baseball, or one of my reasons why, is that I want to make an impact and a difference in other people's lives just by playing the game. And uh, I think I've done that before wearing number 12, and I think now that I get to have that honor of wearing 12, it can make uh, another huge just jump to that meaning for you know other kids, other people, and stuff like that. And um, but. Yeah, just like what Troy and Bose were saying is that, you know, all everybody is looking at you. And so, you know, everything that you do, whether it's your routine, whether it's your nutrition, whether it's sleep, any little thing, it matters. And so, you know, it's, yeah. Troy, you were going to be 17. Austin, you wore 11. Tar, 16. The other thing that I find funny is you all have different numbers in your emails. So was there an adjustment now to knowing you were 12? Oh, for sure. For sure. An adjustment. I mean, you've had so many numbers growing up. Like that number I have in my email is a number in high school that I've just always had. Yeah. And this email's old. So is I that mean, a football number, Austin? Football number. Yes. Well, family football number. Yes, sir. 
Well, he didn't get to wear it, but he rocked two in high school and and uh, six. So he kind of rocked both of them. So, but uh, whenever I like, I was eleven for three years at A and M, and then when I got told it was twelve, like seeing that jersey in my locker was it was weird, obviously, because like eleven became you know like almost my identity, and then it was twelve, and it was just it honestly gives you chills seeing that number, and now you're like, oh man, I get to have this on my back. So, like, that's – it was really a surreal moment just seeing that number and knowing it's yours. Yeah, definitely. I mean, for me, it's – my email number is seven. That's the number I've been since I was maybe seven years old. Um, and then as I went to Oregon State, it was 17 because seven was taken. So I was like, well, I'm going to be the, the one number seven. <laughs> so that's how I went about that. And then – Coming to AM, I guess Coach Yeski kind of hooked me up with a little bit of familiarity and gave me 17. And, uh, but, you know, it, I think it's real easy to detach from a number that you've been associated with for so long when the number that you're switching to means as much as it does. Yeah, 100%. Uh, it, it still feels weird to look at it, like you both said, in my locker. Uh, I think. I think 34 is in my email. I had that in Little League, and I was – yeah, I, I rocked that for quite a while. Um, I was 23 in high school. I kind of got that from my dad. I like the joining numbers, you know, 3, 4, 2, 3, and then 1, 2. So that, I kind of like that. Um, but you know, I've actually had to change some passwords recently too. So instead of 3, 4, 1, 6, that's 1, 2. So, uh, no, it's uh, – Getting a uh, rocket every single day, uh, it's no other feeling. I know these guys, they know what that feeling is. But, uh, you know, I got a lot of 1-6 stuff in my closet, and I got to make a little room for that 1-2. Hey, I got a question for you all, though. Did you have a number 12 practice stuff? Because all of my practice stuff was still number 17 throughout Dude, they, the entire they, year. They hooked us up. Like, I remember you talking to me, like, wearing a 17 BP top and, like, the practice jerseys and stuff. And, the day I got told and announced that I was 12, I had like all this 12 stuff in my locker. I was like, <laughs> I, know, I know Troy is not, not overly happy because I, I, I got I, all 12 stuff. I think I was probably at like a college world series practice still wearing number 17 out there. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say it was a couple of years ago. I see a 17 walking into myself. I'm going, who the hell is that? We don't have a 17 on the team. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Tar, I'm going to break off just a little bit. Has your ball landed from the home run in Stanford during the regional? Uh, which one? I, both of them, they seem to go pretty far. All I know but... is someone texted me after you hit them with a map of the Pacific. Oh, man. They think that's where it landed. <laughs> I mean, have any of his home runs landed yet? Let's be honest. Let's be honest. I had a. I mean, have you made... ever hit a wall scraper in your life? Never Couple. know. Couple. Never. I was, had a pretty good angle at that Stanford home run, and I just literally t- taking little on deck swings, and all of a sudden I see it, and I'm like, so I gotta follow that up. I got, I, I, I have to hit now. Like I have to go up there and hit. Thank God. I think I walked or something. I was like, thank God. After hey, but that, the goal is the goal is to get some more more homers that you know you have to hit those little wall scrapers, so you can kind of add on that little total that I got. No. Tar, you know that the they don't count for double, right? It counts the same. Yeah, it's all the same. I mean, no matter how far it goes over the fence, it counts know. the same. Me and Troy, we we know we get we, we got the, <laughs> we got some wall scrapers. We know they like count all the same. I'm fairly certain. I think Missouri had to charge Tar for the tiles that you broke on that one roof that oh, you hit man. there as well. Oh, that that, that one, cool. obviously, I don't think that's come down. I think it's still on that roof. I'm not yeah, the, the, the two that back to back that he hit at LSU he hit one foul, broke a tile off the roof, and then hit the next one. Yeah. So you, yeah, were, you you're you're racking up a bill everywhere you go in the SEC. I See, I think it would be really intimidating, especially with this team, right? To stop traffic on Wellburn and stop trains because there's someone. I think that would intimidate the defense because someone's going to hit a car. I'm convinced. I don't think we've hit a train yet. I know that's a that is earliest goal, but I know 
I mean, I think, you know, Jay's hit one or hit one on a Wilborn, and I think I've hit one on a Wilburn. Maybe. I see, I see what the video says, but. Well, I've been, I've been hanging around the field a lot the past, uh, past couple of weeks, and I would say there's, I would imagine on this team, there's a good amount of guys who I would say can probably get close to hitting that train, I would assume. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, AB's hitting the he's hitting the rec center. He's playing pepper off that wall in the rec center and left. We're, we're trying. We're trying. We're trying. We, That's we why play. we had to put the net up, Austin. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm glad they put that up. <laughs> I think what's better than that is Troy's backside singles and doubles. That's what I got to yes. say. Hey, yes. You know, hey. just modest work. That's all I can modest do. Work. You, hey, you know they're always going to be there for you. They're always going to be there. Right. All he did was send us to Omaha, right? That's all he did. <laughs> Oh, I, did. <laughs> I still remember that. I, as soon as I hit second, I just looked at him. I get a good old bear hug. That's all I remember yeah. from that. Yeah, I still remember the tweet where it says like Troy, oh my gosh, Tar, oh my gosh, Boast, oh my god, and it's all of us like running at Troy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yep. You know what? I can't let you guys go without. How about the slick backhand that Tar made look easy to set up those heroics behind second base? For sure. That was a tough play that you made look easy, Ryan. Yeah, I do. I do remember that. I That's one thing. I was actually thinking about this on the way up here. Uh, just I'd say I say as a baseball player that we can remember almost any kind of moment, whether it's down to the pitch count, the pitch, the inning, stuff like that. But that my dad has to remind me that, you know, he's like, yeah, you made that made that backhand play. I'm like, I don't really remember that. I remember what happened after that. But well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what, the, I think the greatest play of that game was targeting hit on that first pitch breaking ball to load the bases because it Stay made up. my it, – it brought my nerves from here to here because I was like, well, there's no way he's going to throw anything but a fastball. So I, I appreciate you taking that one for me, Tar. Anytime. Anytime. <laughs> I mentioned off the top about Olsen magic. Tar, there's still some magic to come. Is it, it doesn't have to be the the most, but just what it, when when you guys hear Olson Magic now in all of Texas A and M baseball, what stands out for you? Okay. I think that I mean, go ahead. Go ahead. I think when I when I think of Olson Magic is of how real it is, like that it's there is like a palpable buzz that when you come to a a key point in the game. For whatever reason, the nerves and anxiety just kind of fade away because I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about that place, but something's going to happen. I'm and sure. it just kind of – you're able to take a deep breath and be like, all right, it's it's going to work out. We're going to figure it out. No. That's kind of – there's. I mean, there's a lot of moments, right? But I think as a whole, just there's something about it where it just kind of takes the pressure off. And that the crowd and the noise almost fades and you just kind of like go into this zone where you know that these people, this place is going to get the better of the opponent and it's going to kind of rise us up. I think, I mean, I've, I've always heard about it. And now that I've been a part of it several times, I think one moment that I can say that like whenever this happened i'm like you know it's for real 100 percent was uh our comeback win against south carolina here whenever we were down was it nine nine a lot <laughs> it was a lot and we were in the dugout and there was no sweat there was nothing at all we're, we're just like you know we got it and then there's a run there's a grand slam another run run okay we're back in it all right we're down one again we're fine and then it happens it's like holy crap like and then and that for the rest of the single, or for the rest of the my time being here it's been the same way and it's like you know let's let's play like this all the time no matter where, where we're you know we're not at Olsen Field you know where wherever we're at you know let's 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 try and mimic that and just make our Olsen magic anywhere but no definitely for sure that this place is something special. I I probably can't put into words better than what they them two just did right there because what Troy said literally captures the exact feeling you feel when you're playing on Olsen Field, the comfort of just 
seeing all the, the wave of people behind you, you're still comfortable no matter the lead. Like Tar said, no matter the lead, you're still comfortable. But just one moment, I guess, I could just plays over and over in my head when I think about Olsen Magic is that is when Brett hit that walk-off grand or walk-off home run and the call is Olsen, Olsen, Matt, Brett Minnick, Olsen Magic. It just replays in my head over and over and over again. And it just literally gives you chills. It really does. I'm going to give you a little more that. to that story. So I'm working with Coach Mark Johnson, whose number's retired, right? Mm-hmm. After the home run, I turn to him to get a comment. He's got tears coming down. He's crying. That moment was that impactful. He had tears when we talked to Brett in the dugout, Mike, after that game. And I'm thinking, here's a guy who's gone to the World Series. Here's a guy whose number's retired out there on the wall. And that's how much it meant to him as a former Aggie head coach. And that just, I had to stop. I really did. I had to stop. I'm like, man, that makes the moment even bigger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, one of the craziest, craziest days I've ever had. One of the craziest games I've ever been a part of. Probably the craziest game I've ever been a part of, for sure. No doubt. Yeah. There's also in this game of baseball how you have to deal with failure. Does wearing the 12 either focus you more? Realize, hey, it's I'm, I'm more than just my average. I'm more than just my fielding percentage. I'm more than just my launch angle. Does it kind of help you focus a little bit more as opposed to putting more pressure on you? Personally, the way that I looked at it was um, it took my focus off myself. Um, I think one thing that before, I think it was before we went on Christmas break, um, every everybody, coach had everybody come up to the front of the classroom and kind of give a piece of advice. And my piece of advice was to be selfless. And in the middle of a baseball game, to be selfless. I said, when you can, when you can put your focus on your teammates, it takes the pressure off yourself. Because if all you're worried about is your results, your this, your that, I mean, the way of the world feels like it's on your shoulders. But when you're focused on your teammates' success or, you know, whatever, it, it kind of lightens the load a little bit. And I think wearing the number 12 for me took that idea kind of just to another level. It was, it really was, it was hard for me to get down on my personal success and get too high on my, or my, you know, get too down on my personal failures and too high on my personal success. You're just so focused on your teammates and the community and the team and yeah, I think it's it can be a double-edged sword. It's however you choose to look at it. Are you going to put the, the pressure on yourself or are you going to look at it as I got to do this for everybody else and not for myself? And you got to know you have so many, all your teammates are behind you, no matter what the situation is. Like, you're yeah, you're 12, but like we had a, like a leadership council. I still had four other leaders that were right there at Jack Moss. I had Hunter Hoss. I had... Trevor Warner all literally right beside me and I always so I mean just knowing that you're surrounded by people who want or wanting the same goal as you definitely takes that pressure off and if you're not say you're not performing in one area then you perform better in another area and just being not only the 12th man not only being that guy on the field like you have to be like that guy off the field everybody feels comfortable if they can like come to you and like you're the guy that they're they come and ask questions but like not just about baseball, about life, about everything. And I really took that in last year with the group of guys that I had and tried to get as close with every one of them as I as I really could, honestly. I mean, they what they just said is summed up perfectly. I mean, I can't add much really except uh, I think um, one thing I do have to say is that, you know, you're still a human no matter what you do. I mean, we're all human. We're going to make mistakes. That's going to happen. Uh, and that's what, what we've talked about recently is that, you know, we always try to be perfect. There's only one perfect man, but we try to, you know, we strive for, we strive for perfection and then we fall for excellence and stuff like that. Um, and what Troy said about not putting everything on you, but investing in, you know, your teammates and stuff like that. And one thing I can say is like those guys especially the younger guys you know they're going to look to you as like you know what's what's he thinking about what's 
you know, if he's struggling right now, is he thinking about, you know, stats? Is he thinking about all these numbers? It's like, no, like, I got to fall back to my neutral line. I got to shower well, get all of these negative thoughts, and then I got to put my focus to what's the best thing for the team right now. And, um, you know, with wearing that number, that's what it comes with. But I have no doubt that um, I'll flesh everything out and help help out the team as much as I can. You bring up the selfless and the core values for Texas A&M, and you've all done that. Troy, whether it's handling a staff, whether you guys guard in a different spot in the lineup, Austin, Ryan playing the different positions because what's best for the team. But it all comes back when the 12 to not just the tradition of E. King Gill, but the core values of Texas A&M, doesn't it? it for sure does. For sure does. I mean, like I said, it's 12 just means so much more than just a number. It's like it's who we are as a university and as a group of fans and students. And I mean, it's it's all of us together, like as one. And I feel like that's what 12 means. Like, yeah, we we wore the number on our jersey, but I feel like 12 was like our team. Like we were just kind of the guy who got to wear it. But 12 was the team together as one. That's kind of what I saw it as. Do you have an affinity for Sam Matthews who wore it for football? I I really uh so Blake and Sam are like actually like really close. So And I Blake's really, 21, so it's got yeah. the one and the two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh it, I mean seeing them be close and watching uh well I actually went to the bowl game and watching Matthews ball out at that bowl game was one of the coolest things that I've seen because I mean, didn't get the start like all year, got that start and was like a- actually dominant. Like he was if without him. I mean, I don't know. Like he was absolutely dominant. So, I man, it's really cool. I have a lot of respect for that guy for sure. Yeah, I would agree. And I think just like, you know, ESPN or SEC Network, they all did a really good job of covering his story. And then you see that whatever role he was placed in, I mean, the guy had so much success. And I think that's exactly why he wore the number 12. Mm-hmm. So Schloss has said that it has been near unanimous votes for 12 when it goes to the team. So my question is, did y'all vote for yourselves? <laughs> Actually, I don't even really. I remember. No, I don't know. Did I vote for myself? I don't really remember vo- voting. Honestly, I don't, I don't remember voting. I don't know if it was because it was the first year or he just didn't include me, but I didn't, I wasn't part of any voting process. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I was secretly excluded from that or I I just don't remember. I remember voting for Troy, but I don't remember voting for myself. Like, I don't know if I wasn't a part of that voting either or what, but I don't remember voting for myself. Yeah, I'm not I'm not real too sure either if that conversation was private. It's not something you can campaign for. So what does it say about yourselves? You guys have to talk about yourselves now because you're so good about talking about one another. Right. What does it say? Because it is the type of thing of you walk the walk every single day to earn that honor. It really does say an awful lot about all of you three. Well, I, mean, I, I think mean, for me, I'll go ahead, Buzz. Okay, well, I was going to say, like, I mean, it's honestly been a dream. I mean, it's different for people, but, like, it's been a dream, like, a literal dream of mine to play baseball at Texas a and my entire life. And, like, family of Aggies, tons of Aggies around the family. Grew up watching Aggie football, Aggie baseball, watching that 12 run over the all over the football field. And just, like, so I strived every single day and like, I feel like I was kind of an underdog, like all through high school, got, then went to a junior college, got picked up, kind of slow start and then kind of took off a little bit. And it's just like the dream like came true. And then like that, that college world series year was amazing. And like, I had a great year, the team had a great year. And then like draft might not have worked out the way I wanted to, but then got all these opportunities to come back and, meet all these new guys and represent the university. It was just like, I mean, I wouldn't change anything because that whole year last year was just surreal. And just like, it like makes me so happy just to think about that. I got to experience that. So. Yeah. I think for me, it was, 
my road to AM was so unexpected. And to come halfway across the country and step into a locker room where, you know, I didn't know anybody. And, you know, I'm going to traditions night as a fifth year senior and they're telling me about all the different traditions and uh, they're going over all the different wildcats. And I'm like raising my hand. I'm like, so what if you're, you know, older than all of the things that you just said, what do you do? <laughs> like I really I genuinely had no idea. And um, I think for me, just getting the honor of wearing number 12 was just that I made a, I made the right choice, but B that, the new people I was surrounding myself with trusted me and believed in me. And I had earned the respect and I had earned the trust of a clubhouse. And I think that is something that's very fragile and vulnerable is the trust of a clubhouse. And to be able for me to come in in such a short time and stay true to who I was and not try to be anybody else and just do what I do. And again, just for them to trust me and believe in me. Um, it, I mean, yeah, it, it meant the world. Yeah. My route, my route was a little different. Uh, none of my immediate family wants at A&M only relatives I have were aunts and uncles. So I wasn't really exposed to it as much. Um, but I, went to a camp my seventh grade or in seventh grade. It was actually a pitcher catcher camp. That was my first ever camp. I came to A&M much different than what it is now, of course. But, um, you know, I first time being uh, in college station, first time being on this field, uh, just getting to be around like some of the guys that are playing, getting to be around the coaching staff. I just fell in love with the place and it just felt like home. And I've been there my first time. And so I came to more camps, um, you know, didn't really play summer ball that much because I was from a small town, really wasn't exposed to anything yet. But the more I came, the more I fell in love with it. And I ended up uh, getting an offer. I was extremely blessed uh, just to know that all the hard work and all the effort that I put into it, uh, it finally paid off for that. And I, that's just, you know, one step that I took. I haven't even gotten there yet. But a, uh, a lot of the credit that I have to, you know, do – or have to say is that I got most of my like qualities from my parents, from my family. Um, Cause like I said, I haven't, I, I did not know like what the 12th man stood for growing up. I did not know any of that until I got here. When I got here and finally understood that I'm like, man, like I was so blessed to grow up with that. And now that I see that everybody have these qualities and these standards and, you know, I kind of fit right into that. It kind of made it easier, but then, it wasn't easy because, you know, you still had to show up every single day and do it. But that's what I was all about. That's, you know, I was, it's kind of one of my mottos is that, you know, I show up or I, sh I just show up and I serve others. That's kind of what I want to do every day. You know, whenever I hang my cleats up, you know, I want to find something that I want to help others and stuff like that. So being named uh, number 12, it kind of just shows, you know, all the hard work and effort that, you know, I put in all that these guys have put in because uh, I've I've seen it firsthand. And but just to know that, you know, we got recognized for it. It's a pretty awesome feeling. You know, I should stop there, but I just can't. So, Tar, what was your seventh grade pop time behind the plate? Oh, Actually, I, I wasn't a catcher. I mean, I did catch in Little League I mean, because I was probably I honestly I was probably uh maybe a little bit shorter than what I was or what I am now. I mean, I stopped growing probably a little while back, but I was a, I was a pitcher. I was a decent pitcher in high school. I was I'm a three, a high school. I was a starter. I did have a 0.31 ERA though. I was so, shoving in three, a baseball. Hey, those guys, those guys didn't know what was coming. Hey, I, I will, I will say this. This is a funny story. So I, my sophomore year of high school, I'm starting mm -hmm. on a, Tuesday against a team that was her first year having a baseball program. We show up. It's a pasture. Which, hey, don't even, I'll play anywhere. Don't get me wrong. I'll play with a stick and a <laughs> seed. I don't care. But they're pulling off some dead animals from this field. It's in a pasture. I mean, I'm not. I'm. I'm 
we're kind of familiar with that, but I'm like, man, this is kind of odd, but I end up throwing three innings shut up. This, that's that's the most tar story I've ever heard. I mean, I've ever heard I mean, I, I mean like I I'm laughing, run. but I'm also just like, yeah, this sounds about right. Which well, is mean, not surprising at all. I love yeah. I love going through um, Hallettsville on the bus on the way to Corpus, and y'all wanted to stop at the uh, Hall of Fame to see tar in there. I like that. Yeah, yeah surprise! Remember, there wasn't a parade. I, I mean, tar was. Tar was excited to drive past that Sonic, right? Is there a Sonic or something like that? It, He's like, oh, I used to go there all the time. It, it it five, minutes, five minutes to get through the town. You're out. You're out that. <laughs> you're out that place. I remember uh, we drove through there, and I'm like, if you don't, like, don't blink because you might miss it. But <laughs> yeah, no, that's good times. Good times. I can't thank you all enough. Hey, Troy, by the way, thank you when the guys, I don't know if you knew, as soon as our basketball schedule came out and the ACC SEC challenge was Aggies in Virginia, I get a text. Hey, we got to get together. And that's exactly what we were able to do. Troy, thank you for that. That was awesome. Absolutely yeah, awesome. awesome. Thank y'all. Really proud of y'all. I'd love to do this again with whoever the next 12 is. Maybe this becomes the new tradition, but absolutely wish you all the best for doing this and simply thanks and gig them. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, India.